All right. Looks like we are having everyone stream in here. It's exciting. I'm going to have a fun day today. Um, <clears throat> we're just going to have a couple more minutes here, and then I'm going to share this over on to uh, Facebook. So give me one second here, and we're going to get this live, and then we are going to get going today. All right. Um, looks like All right, I think we are just about good to go here. Thank you so much to everyone for joining. Um, let me present my screen here. And we're going to share screen. And let me know when everyone can see that. I'm going to pop out the chat here so we can chat if need be. All right. Can everyone see the uh, the screen there? Okay. All right. We are going to go live. Share this over to the page. Awesome. All right. So first, thank you to everyone who has joined already. Uh, my name is Alex Camilio. And um, let me know that you can see my screen, the real estate horror stories from the crypt, um, that you can see me and you can hear me uh, and everything is good to go here. Are we good to go? All right. We are good to go. So we are shared over onto Facebook as well. Um, many thanks to the Real Estate Technology Institute for putting this on, and I'm just going to uh, talk about the Real Estate Technology Institute for a second while I get this shared over onto the Agent Inner Circle um, page. So the Real Estate In uh, Technology Institute is who is putting this on today, um, led by the amazing Craig Grant, good friend of mine, uh, and I have the... the uh, the honor and privilege of being an instructor um, with the group. It is a website that has a ton, absolute ton of content that you can use to um, basically improve your business when it comes down to technology. Um, you're able to um, sign in, get all sorts of training videos, uh, help to improve your business. And it is a lot, a lot of fun and a really great um, really, really great platform if you're looking to learn technology. So definitely check that out. Um, give me one more second here, and we are going to share this into the Agent Inner Circle group. Now, for the folks that have not joined the Agent Inner Circle group, um, and may not know who I am yet. My name is Alex Camilio. I am the CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. And uh, we are a community of real estate agents from all over the globe. Uh, the blog itself has about 40,000 subscribers. The uh, group is up to about 2,400 at this point. A whole ton of leadership in the industry, um, people who do a really great consistent business and who are happy to help one another. We also put out content uh, totally free every week that usually has some sort of template, download, uh, handout, thing that you can actually go use in your business that day. 
So over the years, I've helped a whole ton of realtors. Um, I've been in the industry for over a decade now. I've spent a lot of time helping with everything from technology to business building to sales and internal practices and all of those sorts of things. And I have uh, I've heard some stories over the years of working with real estate agents. And those stories are um, kind of fun and kind of amazing. Uh, and, and, you know, you hear some along the way that, that just sort of blow you away. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start out with, uh, in, in, you know, in light of the spooky season and Halloween coming up, it's my favorite, right? My favorite, um, holiday. I love Halloween. Uh, my birthday's around Halloween. My, like, it, it's all that good stuff. So it's just the best. So we're going to do today, we're going to do a handful of uh, of stories, of horror stories within real estate. Talk a little bit about maybe some lessons that we can learn from these horror stories. Some of these are submitted directly from realtors over the years and, and were written by them. And then a couple I'm going to sort of relay the stories that I've been told uh, over the years as well. And then at the end, we're going to get into some ghastly marketing, uh, just some absolutely wild marketing that we've seen out there. Uh, that I feel like fits into our horror story theme. So is everybody ready to have some fun today um, and, you know, enjoy themselves and, and kind of kick back and, and have an enjoyable experience um, as we all get, get ready for Halloween? Folks ready? All right. So we're going to dive in. And the first story that I want to tell everybody today um, is called The Guy in the Basement. And this one actually I just heard recently. Um, and, and was told to me by a good friend, uh, Chris Kelly. And Chris, um, Chris is an agent, but he also does a lot of flipping homes where, you know, and I assume everybody here knows what that is, um, but he, you know, goes in, buys a home, renovates it and resells it and does a good bit of that. He also works with a number of investors um, who are doing the same thing. And he's built a really, really solid practice out of this business. Now, Chris... Um, when he's flipping homes, he's going in, he's renovating. He's been looking for some folks to buy the home the whole time. They're doing these renovations. And after, you know, a couple months of, of renovating the place, they find a, a person to buy the home. It's all set. The deal goes through, they close, they're, they're good to go. Okay. Now the, the next day, the owner, the new owners move in, they're all excited and they've moved into this new home and they're just getting settled in for the evening when someone breaks into their house. Now, the person breaking into their house sees them and is totally shocked that there is even someone there. Now, the, the people obviously are, oh my God, someone just broke into our house, what's going on? Well, come to find out, it was actually the previous owner's son who had been breaking in consistently during renovations um, and had been staying, had been living at the house, uh, staying in the basement consistently the whole time, um, coming in at night, leaving before the workers got there in the morning, um, and just lo and behold, didn't happen to know that the renovations finished. So, of course, it was a huge, um, you know, hassle for the new people moving in. But to this day, because of that uninvited guest and the big surprise that they got from that original night, Chris actually still gets calls um, from these new homeowners saying that they think their house is haunted. And he truly believes that it is, you know, it has to do with that, this experience um, that they had when they first moved in of, of somebody breaking in and you just sort of never quite feel the, the, the same security in a home um, that you do otherwise. So um, quick story, a short story and one that I, I heard recently, but I think it's important to note that when a house is under renovation, when a house is sitting empty um, and that you might be showing it, things like that, you absolutely need to take some of those precautions when it comes to making sure that people aren't getting into the home, staying there overnight, things of that nature. Um, this can be as simple as, you know, some extra locks, some extra this and that. But if you want to go with a high tech solution, you could easily get like a ring camera, right? Ring doorbell camera and set it up in the actual space. 
you could set up some, and you don't have to put an advanced, you know, sec whole security monitoring system in. It's as simple as having, you know, one or two ring doorbell cameras that are hooked up um, in the location. And the nice part is once you own these, you can move them. So you don't need to leave them with the house. You go on, you renovate the next house or you're, you know, the next house is vacant. You might be doing open houses or whatever it is. It's very easy for you to take a ring um, doorbell and use something like that consistently uh, and move it property to property to give yourself that little extra bit of security to know that someone is not breaking it at night and turning into a guy in the basement. So a little bit of a horror story for the, the folks who are moving in. A little bit of a horror story for my friend Chris, um, who has, uh, you know, had to, to deal with this. And, and who knows, maybe the house really is haunted. You never know, right? Um, although these days, you can get a, a, a paranormal inspector. I don't know if any of you have had to deal with that before, but um, I've talked to a number of realtors over the years who buyers, sellers, whatever, they actually <laughs> make them go out and get a paranormal inspection done. And someone comes into the house and tells you whether, you know, whether or not you have ghosts essentially and how to get rid of them and all that sort of stuff. So it exists. It exists out there. Uh, it's kind of wild, but that is our first, we'll say, horror story because um, it was a pretty horrific situation for the folks there. And like I said, uh, definitely something that we can learn from it. The next one might give itself away a little bit uh, from the title, but I want to read this to you because um, this was a story uh, submitted by a Gay Morton. Um, he is, uh, this was submitted a, a few years ago and actually submitted to our blog. Um, we had for years, we're always asking for horror stories and, you know, if, or if we heard a good story or whatever it is, we'd always ask people to write them up. So this is one actually written up, um, and submitted to us. So I'm going to read it, uh, just as, as it was written, right? So this actually happened to me and an agent who worked for me at a previous company, and it is definitely a horror story. I received a letter from a customer inquiring to, uh, to the land available down around the Chester area in Illinois. He wanted to know what land was available with worksheets and plat maps and aerial maps. He said that money was not a problem and could um, we please mail him these things. I gave this to my agent and form, uh, this, all this information um, was gathered up and was mailed back to this possible buyer right, at the P.O. box that he had listed, um, asking that thing to be mailed. After a week, we received a letter back, except it wasn't from the customer. It was from the warden of the prison. Uh, this buyer was, uh, as he informed us, that we were not to, uh, sorry, um, after a week, we received a letter back, except it wasn't from the customer. It was from the warden of the prison. This buyer was in, and he informed us that we were not to send any more maps and such to this person as it gave lots of views of all the land surrounding the prison, which was one of the worst places in the nation at one time. We were horrified at what had taken place. Of course, it also caused a lot of laughter to think of it, but the worst uh, was still to come. That's right, the worst was still to come. The agent working for us was married to the county state's attorney at that time, and she had to go home and tell him what we had done. He didn't see the humor in any of it. So be warned about inquiries from people who don't give you a true address, and they use a P.O. box. And also, you might want to consider uh, the area they're inquiring about. Who would have thought about a prisoner using this means as a way to check out his surroundings? I hate to think that he could have used these items to plan a getaway or something of that nature. Um, again, I think it's it's kind of an incredible horror story. Um, could you imagine learning that you you had sent maps of the of you know the land surrounding a prison to a prisoner? Um, it's kind of funny situation, but I think it really talks to you need to be figuring out who the folks are that you're working with, right? There, there are always lessons in these horror stories. Um, and I've heard a number of different uh, things where people are getting contacts from jail, letters from jail, emails from jail, text messages from jail. You'd be amazed the amount of communication that can, can make its way 
um, into and out of, out of a jail, even when you think it might not be able to. So uh, always be wary of that. Always be wary of the folks that you're working with. Um, and definitely either you want to be doing some background checks or, you know, definitely doing some things to uh, to protect yourself. So another just wild horror story um, and a fun one from uh, from over the years. Now, this one is called They Don't Get Much Crazier Than This. And this is another one that was submitted um, by a realtor uh, to our blog. Um, another one we heard and, and uh, um, Pat decided to actually write this up for us. So thank you to Pat. Um, so Pat says, I had a listing with a client for about two weeks. She called me up to tell me she was going out of town for the next week and that we could just show it any time. She didn't need to be notified. And she gave me the date to start calling her again for updates. During that week, we had no showings. We had six in the prior two weeks, though. She gets back and calls me to let me know that and asks if there had been any showings, to which I let her know, unfortunately, no. Two days later, she calls me up and wants to know who showed the house while she was gone. Right? Who showed the hell she was gone? I again informed her that no one had. Two days later, she calls me and tells me that her footlocker appears to have been gone through and must have happened while she was gone. I again let her know that no one had shown the home. The next day, she calls me to let me uh, tell me that there is stuff missing out of her dresser drawers. Again, it must have happened while she was gone. After I had her come to the office, after that, I had her come to the office so she could see the showing sheet. She then calls me right after leaving the office. She tells me that it must have been me since I have the code. Right then and there, I told her I would be over in 15 minutes to give her the keys out of the box and take my sign. She acted surprised and tried to talk about other stuff, but I told her I was on my way. Before I left, my broker told me I may want to take a police officer with me, considering the allegations this client was making. I thought it was a good idea and called one of my friends at the police department. Well, parentheses, I've been a fireman since 1991 in this town. And he showed up with me. He stood off to the side of the door where she could not see him. She answered the door. I handed her the keys and told her she would have to contact another agent. She said, you know, Pat, I could ruin you. I said, well, ma'am, that is, is not really something I get into, playing games like that. She said, I may just say that you raped me. At this point, the officer stuck his head out and asked if there was a problem. She freaked out. He told her filing a fake police report is a crime. And she screamed a not so nice word at me and slammed the door. I have to thank my broker for her suggestion of bringing a cop with me. Had I not, it could have been ugly. I learned to use an electronic box and always keep my guard up for the strange ones. Right? What a story. Um, can, all right. We got to get some comments in chat here, right? Was that a wild story or what? Feels like a bit of a horror story to me. Was that a horror story? Yeah. Was that a real estate horror story? What do you guys think in chat? I'm going to go over to the, the Facebook chat here too, because I see it blowing up over on the side, right? All right. So wild story. Um, and I think it's one, again, one of those very much a CYA stories. Uh, if things really are going that far south, um, if you're having that much many challenges with, um, you know, with someone you're working with, hey, don't be afraid to fire a client. Um, we actually talked about this uh, in the blog, in the Agent Inner Circle blog, I wrote an entire article about how to avoid problem clients to begin with, and then how to get rid of a, you know, how to essentially fire a problem client when it comes to that. So definitely check that out in the Agent Inner Circle blog as well. Um, but also, you know, don't be afraid that when you need some backup, when you need some help, um, all those sorts of things, just be very, very careful out there. Um, with with how things are going, especially when when people are making uh, a lot of false claims, you know, definitely when people start doing that, you absolutely need to protect yourself uh, and try not to end up in the same situation uh, that Pat did. Now the next one is a story that was relayed to me um, from a friend of mine, and I had just walked off of stage. Uh, I was speaking for the North Carolina Association of Realtors, and um, North Carolina is an awesome spot. I love working down there. Um, thank you to everybody at, at NCAR um, or NC Realtors. I want to think it is now. 
God, so many have changed their names. But thank you to everybody um, there who have brought me down to speak before. That was great. But I was doing a presentation on uh, tech safety, on you know data security and how to keep your information safe and all that sort of stuff. And right after I get off stage, um, a friend approaches me and says, Alex, I got just a wild story for you. And I said, okay, what, you know, what's that? What, what is it? He said, well, there's this brokerage um, down in North Carolina who in large brokerage who, um, and this is a, a handful of years ago now, but, but it was as we were transitioning into a lot of storing documents digitally, you know, getting rid of paper documents, and, and we still are to some extent, but it, but I think we've seen the biggest wave of the, you know, paperless stuff kind of pass. But this was in the heat, the, the middle of the paperless stuff. So they're, they're, they know they need to, to back up their information and they need to keep their records securely and all that sort of stuff. So the brokerage decides that they are going to uh, back up all of their information and, um, and they're, but, but basically instead of backing it up digitally, they're going to try to keep paper records and just get a facility that will keep these paper record backups, you know, that are not in agents' emails or not in all over the place, like one set record that they're going to keep this whole set of records um, in a facility for it. So they rent the entire floor of a commercial space and they move in all of their stuff all of their paper records into file cabinets and so on. The space is set up to be, you know, all the things you need to keep, to keep paper records, right? It's temperature and humidity controlled and, and all that fun stuff. What they didn't think about, however, was that they had an office space directly above them. And as office spaces need, office spaces need to have bathrooms, which require sewage lines. Well, lo and behold, they get all their documents in. They're all set. They go to bed that night, you know, peaceful rest. We've got everything done and we're all secure and we've, we've done our due diligence and we've got it into this secure space. And what happens? A sewage line breaks and floods the entire record room with sewage. Now, the crazy part to this is because it's sewage and not just water, not something else, it is becomes a biohazard. And under all mandates, biohazards have to be burned. They actually have to be destroyed, incinerated. So in one fell swoop, this brokerage lost all of the copies, all of their paper records, everything that they had been storing in one snap because a sewage line broke um, and flooded their record room. Again, horror. Can you imagine the horror of being in that position where you just realize that you've lost all of your records and something like that? Now, this is something where, again, we can take a really, really good lesson from this, which is if you are keeping records, you need to back them up in three places. We always recommend three different digital locations. Paper storage. I don't know why for years people thought paper storage is somehow better um, then, then digital, it really is not, I promise you it is not. Um, so backing up your digital copies in three different places is the key. And we have information, um, on the real estate technology Institute. They have some stuff that will teach you how to do that in a lot of depth. Um, we even covered this on the agent inner circle blog as well. Uh, so there's a lot of information out there on how to do it, um, for you to access. Okay. So we've made it a pretty good way into horror stories here. I've got one more horror story for you. And this is this is one of my favorites. It's a, a little bit longer than the others. Um, but I just, I absolutely one of my favorite horror stories. And then we'll get into some of the, uh, the ghastly marketing that we've seen out there. So this was submitted by Ronnie, uh, Ronnie German. Thank you so much, Ronnie, for uh, for submitting this and contributing this. Um, from a handful of years ago, and it is just an awesome story. So I'll read this to you. Believe it or not, I sold the wrong house two different times and one week between each mishap. Here's what happened. My clients and I drove up to the first house and we were chatting up a storm. 
We drove up and saw the real estate sign and I glanced at the address on the house. The house was missing a th the third number out of four digits. It had apparently fallen off. No biggie though. I used the lockbox in the front door and we proceed to, the, to view the property. My clients loved it. So we wrote the offer up that afternoon. It was accepted and everyone was happy for a week until the home inspection. I show up using my GPS on my vehicle to get to the house. When I get there, I'm surprised that the house doesn't look familiar. When I get in the house, I know I have never been in this house before. Uh-oh. So I call my clients and tell them, well, you are buying a house, but it isn't the house you think you are buying. They were freaked out. <laughs> I can't even imagine saying that to a client. They were freaked out and we stopped the inspection. They showed up to see the quote new house and discovered that they liked it better. As it turns out, it was three doors down from the one that they thought they were buying, the one with the missing address number. They proceeded to close on the house. What luck, right? I was very careful to make sure the real estate sign had the appropriate agent named on the sign. My clients were sitting in my vehicle with me. Okay, hold on. Sorry, I, I skipped the line there. Um, they proceeded to close on the house. Now, here's how this happened a second time. A week later, I showed another couple of houses. I was very careful to make sure the real estate sign had the appropriate agent named on the sign. My clients were sitting in my vehicle with me, with the husband in the back seat and the wife in the front next to me. We viewed several homes and they found one they liked, and it was priced great. As we were driving around, the husband made a, a comment of it is 133rd Street. I responded with, no, it is 132nd Street. See here on the listing printout? Well, he made no further comment and we viewed the home on 132nd Street. We wrote the offer that afternoon and I presented it that same day. Anyway, I was happy that her offer was accepted. I was talking and joking with the listing agent. As we were talking, I told him about the first house that I sold in error. He said that he could definitely see how that could happen. He told me he had a house listed on the next street over that was literally the same as the house my clients were buying. All of a sudden, I had a recollection of my buyer's comment from the back seat, and I broke out in a real sweat. Could it be that we had offered on the wrong home? I asked the other agent what the house numbers on that house were. They were one number off from out of five um, from the house we wrote on, and they were not on the house, only the mailbox. Not again. I had to know for sure. So I drive over and sure enough, I wrote the offer on the wrong house again. I called my clients and told them that they were buying a house, just not the house that they thought they were buying. Once again, I get the clients in the car and drive over to the house they actually wrote on. Luckily for me, the other agent had been correct and they were virtually the same house. Although the house was flip-flop, they both had three bedrooms, one bath. They both had a covered patio, air conditioning, which is rare in this price range. They both had fireplaces and hardwood floors in the living and dining areas. I lucked out even more because my clients like this house better too. Although both had fenced backyards, this one had a fenced front yard too, and they had children. A miracle. I sold the wrong house and it closed with happy clients and then did the same thing again the next week. Amazing, but true. So I don't know if it's so much of a horror story as it is a, this guy, uh, this guy lives miracles, apparently, um, Ronnie or, um, sure if it's either way, whoever it is, they live miracles. They should have bought, um, they absolutely should have bought some lottery tickets that week, um, uh, because it is absolutely mind boggling that they sold the wrong house, uh, two weeks in a row. <laughs> so I think the lesson learned here is, um, you absolutely need to pay attention to the details. This is a detail, detail, detail oriented business, um, extra pictures, extra confirmations, extra details. And if you're ever unsure of anything, you absolutely need to, uh, to double check those things because I don't know how they got that lucky, but that easily could have gone the opposite direction where they are totally unhappy with those houses. Um, and just turned into an absolute nightmare. And I mean nightmare. So he, in this, this situation, the person missed this nightmare, um, but this one could have turned into a bigger nightmare than all of the rest. Now, that being said, these are the horror stories that I have for you. 
but I want to dive into some ghastly marketing as well, right? Oh my God. So uh, hello to uh, Tita and hello to Derek. I know Derek says, how lucky can an agent get, right? Like go buy lottery tickets. It's just wild. Um, all right. So now we finished up with the horror stories. I'm going to dive into some, um, some really just what I call horrorable marketing because this stuff uh, might as well be a horror story of marketing. Now, the first one you might have, and you might have seen some of these in groups. Um, these are ones we've collected over the years and posted into a lot of different groups and shared with a lot of people over the years and all that sort of stuff. But the first one, and and right along with our theme today, um, is hey, the positive, right? You got those quiet neighbors across the street. Um, it's one way to look on the bright side, I guess. Or is that the bright side? I don't know. All right. Now these, <laughs> these always get me. So, um, and again, I think they sort of stick with our theme of, of like Halloween horror stories here, because I don't know about you, but to me, those cat's eyes and then her eyes, like she looks kind of possessed. Is that just me or does like, she look kind of little, little possessed there, right? For perfect real estate help, contact my mommy. <laughs> My mommy sells, I mean, I guess for your cat people out there, um, but between these eyes and these eyes, I'm like wondering who's possessing who here. Like, I feel like this cat is, might, might actually just be like possessing her because yikes, right? Um, the, ne the next one, I always love this. See was what others miss, right? Just this just blows me away. It's so funny to me, right? Anybody else? I mean, do you see this as being your marketing? Does this fit you? You're, you're zoned in. I don't know what she was trying to portray here, um, but whatever it was, it certainly did not come off the way it was intended. Um, this dude is just, I don't know, Halloween costuming for, for his, uh, for his billboards or for his, uh, you know, newspaper um, sides or whatever it is he's got here. Miles above the competition, sheep, and I, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on here, <laughs> right? Um, so before I get keep going further here, if anyone has any stories they would like to share, please do so in chat. I, we love to, to get stories from everyone. Um, we actually have a thread going over in the Agent Inner Circle group. Um, please join over there as well. There's another, there's a good thread, excuse me, with some other comments um, and some other stories in there. Uh, but let's look at another one here. And I thought these were kind of great in how these folks are using their names for stuff. So like, I mean, the, the eight-year-old in me just giggles <laughs> in the movie theater, but like Anita Wiener, I mean, I feel bad. I, who are her parents? Like, or why did she, I just, something, use your initial, like, A, like, come on, something in here, right? And then these, this one, <laughs> this one again, your number one choice. Oh, guys, what is going on here? I think these are pretty amazing. Um, these, I think, are, are great. You've probably seen the one on the left here make its way through a lot of the different uh, Facebook groups, uh, and I'm not going to read all of that out for everybody, but uh, but Rich will definitely wank it. So, um, yep. This one, I mean, Dr. Evil. Okay, or is that the James Bond one? Sorry, that's not Dr. Evil. That's the, the James Bond villain. Do you want a James Bond villain to, like, sell your home? I don't... Maybe it's me, but like I don't feel like a James Bond villain is somebody I'm gonna like associate with. Be like, oh, like eh, not so much, right? Now we move on to billboards here um, for a second because there are a few just sort of amazing billboards. Um, this don't get a divorce, just get a bigger house. Like, oh my lord, people, what are we doing? Okay, this is a a great. I mean, just great example of some some ghastly marketing. 
Doesn't get much worse than this though, right? LA's hottest realtor. I think these are, are kind of amazing, right? People going with some, some little off themes here. Don't try to buy a home alone, right? Wow, going all in on the puns. And then this one's a little spooky. The power team, Ken and Chuck, voted eighth best real estate team. Were you like eight out of eight? Like how many were there that you're voted eighth? And why would you put eighth? First of all, let's just get past the Chucky doll that's on there, right? And that thing coming alive and like scaring the pants out of everybody. Why would you put your voted eighth best at anything ever, right? I just kind of amazing to me. Um, but we keep going with our, with our boards here, right? I mean, guess what I did with your neighbor? Did, like, are we going with the, like, I know what you did last summer vibe? This is just mind blowing to me. Uh, I'll sell your home for free. I don't know how that dude's making money, but that's cool. Um, maybe we'll go with the, the James Bond license to sell, right? Maybe we associate with them, I guess a little bit. Maybe I, I don't know. This is great too. Moving to Canada, we can sell your home. I mean, people going all in, right? Um, food. I guess people needed some food related items for what's going on here. <laughs> for sale Dorita, but I love that she's got a Doritos bag in her hand in the like in the ad. Like or I am not your average agent. <laughs> oh my God. Are these people you want to work with? Like, do you see these ads? They look at themselves and you're like, wow, I really want to work with that person. I mean, I guess it shows humor, but man, I think there's other ways to do it. This is just bad design. Um, like, <laughs> right? I know you will be happy here. You will, I promise. Again, just looking all possessed over here. And I love the uh, the condom man realty. Um, definitely not not thinking through the uh, the placement. Didn't take some measurements before they did that. Um, and then we're going to close on these. These are some of my favorites. Uh, the first one being Dave Foreman and number one sales rep in the region, according to my mother. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. Mom says I'm best. <laughs> Mother dearest. Like, okay. Um, I wonder if he has to ask Mother uh, to approve all of his deals, though. I, I'm, I'm always curious if, if that's how that goes. And then the last one here is selling your home should not be a pain in the butt. And then on these, it says expired listing, question mark. Oh, come on, people. <laughs> what are we doing here? Oh, man. So, um, like I said, today was going to be a, a short one. We're going to have some fun for Halloween, um, learn some lessons from some horror stories. Um, do, do you guys have any questions about, like, any of these ads or, like, want to see any of these again? Um, you know, let me know because some of these are just absolutely wild. And I look through and I'm like, I sort of get what they were going for, but just, just the wrong execution on this entirely. Um, so any questions, comments, thoughts? Yeah, great. <laughs> Derek says, moms are proven as the best testimonials according to no books ever. <laughs> it's so true. And yes, Craig, these are gold. Um, I big thanks to uh, Alicia Amundsen, who's my content director. She and I, this isn't even our full vault of these. Um, she and I have been collecting pictures, ads, et cetera, for years, figuring at some point we're going to be able to do something like this with them. We have even more of them. Um, I put them in the a lot of them in the blog today. So uh, yeah, m mother said it was okay to put them on the blog. So, you know, figured we would. Um, but yeah, no, we're, we're always out here having fun. If you see any uh, wild marketing, ghastly marketing, feel free to put it into the agent inner circle group. Um, if you have any horror stories for us, we always love to hear those uh, and love to hear that that sort of, you know, that information um, because we really, really, really um, 
you know, we, we really need a, a we, we can learn lessons from these horror stories, right? We can learn lessons from this, this advertising. And, and if we really wanted to go into a deep dive here, like there's some interesting stuff going on that like here, right? I'm actually not totally opposed to this one. I feel like this one sort of, it's cute and it, it matched our theme for today. So I, found, I figured it would be put in, but in all honesty, I don't see this as being the worst type of marketing um, out there. When you start getting into stuff like this, like if any if any of us cringe, like if you put out marketing and anybody at all walks by it and cringes, you're probably not doing what you want to be doing. Um, Dana says, thank you. Thank you so much, Dana. I appreciate it. Appreciate you coming today and spending your time with us. Um, definitely appreciate that time is a, a wonderful thing that you can give. I hope I hope you got some some smiles and maybe even a couple of lessons out of this today. So did everybody get some laughs from this today? Did we at least get, you know, some some good humor out of it and, and have a fun time with these horror stories? I feel like uh, I, I wanted to, to change up pace a little bit and instead of being so, you know, tech, 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 et cetera, et cetera. I really wanted to bring something today, a little more lighthearted, um, have fun with everybody. Like I said, Halloween's coming up one of my favorite holidays um, and, and we got to work some fun into our life here. So um, yeah. See if we got any others here. I mean, this one, dude, like what are we doing? <laughs> right. I mean, th this is okay. The power team of Ken and Chuck, like, And the dude's using a QR code. I almost want to scan it. I'm going to. Hold on. Let's scan this and see if it's still a thing. <laughs> All right. Let's scan it. Let's do it. Oh, that didn't take. Ah, it doesn't go. It's dead at this point. I wonder why. Yeah, link doesn't go anywhere. Sorry, sorry, Ken and Chuck. Okay, one last question before I leave everybody today. If nobody has any questions or comments or thoughts or anything like that. Um, which one do you think is Ken and which one do you think is Chuck? I mean... You'd think the guy on the right is Chuck, right? You'd think the doll is Chuck, but I don't know. <laughs> Craig says, I want to hire that guy as in the dummy, not Ken. What's what I'm saying, Craig? Well, who do you know? Which one's, hi, I'd like to hire Ken. <laughs> and the dummy responds, hi, I'm Ken. <laughs> like, I can just see it now. Oh, you actually wanted to work with Chuck? What? I always think I'm Chuck. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. All right. All right. We're going to close this down, everybody. Um, thank you so much to everybody who joined us today. Uh, my name is Alex Camilio. I am the CEO of the Agent Inner Circle with agentinnercircle.com. It is a totally free blog in case you've not checked it out. 100% um, free content every week. Um, Scott, happy Halloween. Thank you so much. Barbara, thank you so much. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed themselves today and had fun with this. Uh, Scott, Barbara, did you guys enjoy yourself today? Um, I, I surely hope so. Um, Tita, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, Craig, who well, hope the dummy is listed first. That agent needs to talk to his publicist. <laughs> That's so true. Um, thank you, everybody, today. I really appreciate all of your time. Uh, if you've not checked out the Agent Inner Circle thus far, please do. Totally free content. Don't even have to give us your email address. Check out the Agent Inner Circle group. Um, and again, this was put on by the Real Estate Technology Institute. Big thanks to them and to Craig Grant. Um, absolutely, you know, education master uh, Craig Grant for putting these on. So thank you so much. And I hope everybody has a happy Halloween. <laughs>